In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for joining me in this channel. My name is Father Evaristus Abu, and I present to you today the Liturgy of the Word. Today is Friday of Easter Octave. Our readings today are set for us to meditate and reflect on how we can be better witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ. If God has given us an assignment, truly, we cannot find success doing something else. We cannot afford to disobey God, go against His plans for our lives, or refuse to answer our calling and still find peace and happiness. This was the experience of Peter in our Gospel passage today. And in our first reading, Peter, now a convinced man, having been convinced in the power of the resurrection, is fearless, is able to defend his faith because he knows that this was what he was called to do. Let us now listen to our readings for today. Our first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. In those days, as Peter and John were speaking to the people, after the lame man was healed, the priests and the captain of the people and the Sadducees came upon them, annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about five thousand. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem with Adams, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and the elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a cripple, by what means this man has been healed, be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This is the stone which was rejected by you, builders, but has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Give Praise to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. But the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. 
the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Ghana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet his disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, for he was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish lying on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Honor to Mary and Joseph. My dear friends in Christ, today we shall ask ourselves certain important questions. Number one, can we disobey the will of God for our lives and still be successful? Number two, can we possibly ignore God's words, disregard his commandments and still find success? in life? Can we disobey the will of God for our lives and still be successful? 
Jonah tried it. He thought he was smart. He thought he could run away from God. But in the end, he realized that when God gives you an assignment, you cannot find success in doing something else. When God has given us certain instructions how to live our lives, when God has given us commandments, He has given us the way to follow. And we say to God, I know better than you. I will not follow this way. I will follow my own way. Can we hope to achieve our hopes and aspirations in life when we go against God's will and God's plan for us? Peter was not trained to be a rabbi. Peter was a successful fisherman. But Jesus saw in Peter certain qualities, certain potential for the work of God. One day, Peter walked with his fellow fishermen all through the night and caught nothing. This is Luke chapter 5 at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. The next morning, after that old night of frustration, having caught nothing, Peter was at the shore of the sea, mending his boat, mending his nets. And Jesus Christ came and begged Peter, please, can I use your boat? Put out a little from the land. And Peter did. So Jesus sat on Peter's boat. And Jesus preached the word of God to all the people who had gathered by the sea. And they all listened to Jesus. And their hearts burned just as the heart of the two disciples on their way away from Jerusalem. On their way to Emmaus. After Jesus had finished ministering to the people, Jesus said to Peter, Put out your net for a catch. And Peter said to Jesus, Master, we walked all night long and we caught nothing. But at your word, I will put down the net. The moment Peter did that, there was such a huge catch of fish that he had to beckon on his fellow fishermen to help him haul the fish in. Peter knew that this was not ordinary. Peter knew that that was not even the right time to catch fish. So Peter knelt down before Jesus and said to him, Depart from me. For I am a sinful man. In other words, I don't deserve this. And Jesus Christ said to Peter, From now, it is men that you will be catching. Child of God, follow this. That was the call of Peter. He walked all night and caught nothing. And the next day, at the command of Jesus, he caught such a huge catch. And Jesus Christ said, follow me. Follow me. Be my disciple. Now, despite having been with Jesus for three years, despite witnessing the resurrection, running to the tomb and seeing the empty tomb, despite hearing the witness of Mary, Madeleine and the other Mary who told him that the Lord has risen. Even Jesus Christ had appeared to Peter already after the resurrection and the other disciples. Peter still had the, 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 the boldness or the effrontery to return to fishing. He said to the other disciples, I am going fishing. 
given that Peter was their leader, they said, we will go with you. But that night, they walked hard, they rode and rode and rode and rode and tried everything they could and they caught nothing. The same thing that happened in Luke chapter 5 happened again in John chapter 21. And the next morning, just as day was breaking, there was Jesus. And Jesus called out to the disciples, Children, have you caught anything? And they said, No. He said, Try the right side of the boat. And when they did, there was such a huge catch. Once again, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And Peter, who had been stripped for work, quickly put on his clothes and ran into the water. They were not far from the land. And he came to Jesus. Peter realized one thing that day. That if God has called you to a particular assignment, that is the only assignment you can be successful at. Except if God did not call you to that. But if God has called you to that, that is where you should be. Do not try to run away from God. Do not try to resist the calling of God. Do not return to where you are coming from. This is a new life. Embrace your new life in Christ Jesus. Do not go back there. Do not be concerned about how you are going to eat. Where will my next meal come from? What will I wear? No, leave it for God. You see, God did not call everybody. God did not call all of us to be ministers. Everybody was called to a particular assignment in life. When you discover your own calling, that is, the way, that is where you are to serve God. That is where you are to worship God. You cannot discover your calling and try to do something else. Peter was not called to be a fisherman anymore. Yes, he was a fisherman. But having been called to ministry, he couldn't be successful catching fish any longer. That experience was an eye-opener for Peter. It made Peter to realize that everywhere he went, Jesus was, Jesus is. It made Peter to become fearless and bold. It made Peter to know that God will always stand for him. God will always be dear for him. See the same Peter who was trying to run away from God, who denied Jesus Christ three times, who was so afraid. The same Peter stood before the very people who ensured that Jesus Christ died. The people who, 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 who arrested Jesus, who brought Jesus before Pontius Pilate. The same people who uh, gingered the crowd or who made the crowd shout, crucify him, crucify him. This same Peter stood before them and said, he said, I, I, I will read. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God has raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has now become the cornerstone. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 10. To 11. Child of God, the message for us today is to sincerely ask ourselves, am I trying to make money or am I doing that which God has ordained for my life? If you are not doing that which God has ordained for you, I bet you, you may be having the same experience of Peter, walking all through the night, only 
to catch nothing. Let us pray today for the grace to discover our calling, the grace to discover our vocation, the grace to, re to, to remain steadfast, totally depending on God and not on the material things of this world. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Be happy. Live positive. It is well with you. God bless you. Thanks for listening.